Today, I'm going to discuss quadriceps tendinopathy, which is also often referred to as tendinitis, tendinosis, and jumper's knee. Forewarning, this is a long video with a lot of detail, so feel free to use the timestamps. The quadriceps consist of four different muscles, the vastus medialis, the vastus lateralis, the vastus intermedius, and the rectus femoris. All four muscles come together to form the quadriceps tendon that attaches to the patella or kneecap. They'll then insert on the tibial tuberosity via the patellar tendon and act to extend or straighten the knee. Together, the quadriceps muscle and tendon, patella, and patellar tendon are referred to as the knee extensor mechanism. Therefore, anytime your quads are working, such as when squatting, jumping, running, and climbing stairs, your quadriceps tendon is also working. Quadriceps tendinopathy should not be confused with patellar tendinopathy or jumper's knee, which refers to pain localized to the inferior pole of the patella. Although similar, quadriceps tendinopathy, the less common of the two diagnoses, refers to pain localized to the superior pole of the patella that has a dose-dependent relationship with the magnitude and rate of loading. For example, I'd expect a single leg squat to hurt more than a double leg squat. I'd also expect a double leg jump to hurt more than a double leg squat based on the load experienced by the quadriceps tendon. The term tendinopathy just means that there is persistent tendon pain and loss of function related to this mechanical loading. Tendinitis, used to indicate an inflammatory process, is not the preferred diagnosis because, similar to other tendon-related issues, inflammation is not believed to be the primary driver of the condition and may reflect the normal response to tendon loading and adaptation. Plus, people often associate inflammation with the need for ice and complete rest, which are not the primary treatment strategies recommended. Tendinosis, used to indicate a degenerative process, is also not the appropriate terminology as abnormalities on imaging can be found in people without symptoms and are not predictive of future issues. Therefore, instead of unnecessarily focusing on inflammation or what the tendon looks like on imaging, the goal of rehab is twofold. One, improve your tolerance to various forms of loading, and two, restore function of the knee extensor mechanism the rest of the kinetic chain, and you, the person, in general. A fundamental component of rehab is understanding and monitoring pain. Do you have to avoid pain during exercise, or is it safe to push into a little pain? Well, the majority of researched exercise programs for tendinopathy use pain-based criteria for progressing exercises. In fact, some papers actually increase the difficulty of an exercise if participants have a decrease in pain. Silbernagel et al. in 2007 helped popularize the model that's most often used today, which involves exercising to a tolerable level of pain. This is unique to you. One person watching this video might only be comfortable exercising with slight pain, while someone else might be comfortable exercising with moderate pain. There's not necessarily a right or wrong way to go about it, but there are some strategies you can use to help find what works best for you. You're not only going to monitor symptoms during exercise, but immediately after and the following day. Ask yourself three questions. One, is my pain tolerable during exercise? If it's helpful for you, you can rate your pain on a scale from zero to 10 and determine the highest acceptable number for you. Some physical therapists might recommend staying at a three out of 10 pain or less, while others might suggest five out of 10 pain or less. You get to decide. Two, is my pain better, worse, or the same after exercise? Quadriceps tendinopathy may exhibit a warm-up phenomenon where symptoms actually improve with physical activity, so it's possible that you feel better after exercising for a short period. Three, is my pain better, worse, or the same the day after exercise? This is the most important question because it gives us an understanding of how you're responding to the current dosage of exercise. If you feel fine during and immediately after exercise, but you have a significant worsening of symptoms the next day, that's an indication that you're doing too much and need to back off a bit. You can assess your next day symptoms with your normal functional activities or use a specific assessment such as the single leg decline squat. 
For example, you rate your pain on day one with a single leg decline squat as a three out of 10 pain. You then perform your exercise routine with intolerance, go about your day and go to bed without any major issues. The next morning you perform the single leg decline squat again, but this time you rate your pain as a six out of 10. This means that even though your symptoms were tolerable during exercise, you might have done more than what you can currently recover from. You didn't do any harm, but decreasing the volume or intensity would be recommended. So, do you have to avoid pain during exercise? Not necessarily. Is it safe to push into a little pain? Yes. However, you're going to have to find what works best for you. Before outlining the exercises, it's important to discuss load management and activity modifications. Quadriceps tendinopathy is thought to occur when the intensity, frequency, and volume of quadriceps tendon loading exceeds your capacity to recover and adapt appropriately. It often comes down to doing too much, too soon, although that'll look slightly different for more active individuals versus less active individuals. Let's tie the goals of rehab, pain monitoring, and load management together by reviewing the boom-bust cycle. Tell me in the comments if it sounds familiar. You have a spike in activity over the course of a day, week, or month that contributes to symptoms of your knee. You decide to rest completely and your symptoms go away. Excellent. You recognize that you overdid it last time, so you don't do quite as much this time around. However, you have a flare-up despite doing less of the same activity. You rest again until your pain goes away and repeat this process until your activity level is severely diminished. This is not an uncommon cycle. It's often driven by the belief that pain is bad and rest is good, while also using a reduction in pain as the primary metric for success. But that's not the way to approach quadriceps tendinopathy because rehab can take three months, six months, or even a year or longer. Symptoms will fluctuate on a day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week basis, which is why your focus should be on function while monitoring pain to guide the appropriate amount of physical activity. An increase in function will not always correlate with a linear decrease in pain. If you go from running one mile with a three out of 10 pain to running three miles with a three out of 10 pain over the course of three months, that's actually significant progress. The pain may seem like it's staying the same, but technically it's getting better because it requires more activity to reach the same level of pain that you initially experienced. Remember, one of the primary goals of rehab is to restore function. You'll monitor your symptoms during and after exercise to ensure that you're not exceeding your current capacity while keeping track of your progress with the various exercises. At the same time, you'll reduce the frequency, intensity, or volume of activities that are aggravating your symptoms and limiting your functional progress, such as basketball or volleyball. If needed, you can replace the reduction in that specific activity with a different activity that doesn't exacerbate symptoms to maintain your fitness. I'm going to present four overlapping stages of rehab. There's no criteria that you have to meet to progress from one stage to the next. Rather, your exercise selection and progressions should be dictated by your symptoms, tolerance, and function. The intention is for you to slowly and gradually improve your quadricep tendon's ability to handle increasing loads. A study by Song et al. in 2023 established a loading index for exercises related to the quadriceps tendon. As you can see, there's a fairly predictable increase in loading of the quadriceps tendon with exercises performed on one leg compared to exercises performed on two legs, including jumping and hopping type exercises. Running and cutting and a single leg decline squat were the only activities that crossed their threshold for tier three loading. Two things to note. One, I'm not going to follow their hierarchy exactly, but it can be helpful to keep this general framework in mind throughout the rehab process. Two, the loading profiles of these movements are also influenced by other factors, such as the weight being used and the effort you exert. Similarly, exercises that require greater degrees of knee flexion, like a deep squat, cause higher loading of the quadriceps tendon, so that may be another variable you choose to modify. Okay, let's get into it. Stage zero, isometrics. Most tendinopathy protocols actually have isometrics listed as stage one, but they're listed here as stage zero because I don't think there's an isometric milestone that you need to pass before performing the next group of exercises. 
However, they do have the potential to provide an analgesic effect and are typically quite tolerable since little to no movement is occurring. I'm going to provide you with five examples so you can choose what works best for you based on your preference, equipment availability, tolerance, function, etc. One, double leg wall sit. Two, single leg wall sit. Three, heel elevated wall sit. The single leg and heel elevated variations are both progressions of the double leg wall sit. Four, Spanish squat. With a strap or band anchored around your legs in a squat rack, you'll sit back until your hips and knees are at roughly 90 degree angles. Five, single leg seated knee extension. You can perform this exercise with a machine, band, or some other setup with your knee between 90 and 60 degrees of flexion. How would you incorporate these into your routine? You can perform them as a warm up prior to your workouts or they can be used as an independent stimulus completed one to three times per day. You'd pick one option to complete for three to five sets of 30 to 45 second holds with a two minute rest between sets. Make it hard, but keep it tolerable. Stage one, heavy, slow resistance. You can pick any exercise in this stage as long as it's tolerable and sufficiently loads the quadriceps tendon. I'll provide four options. One, squat. Progressions can be made by increasing the resistance over time or choosing a variation that emphasizes the knee extensors more, such as a heel elevated squat. Two, split squat. Similarly, progress the resistance, range of motion, or amount of forward knee travel over time. Three, step down. Progress by elevating the height of the step or your heel or increase the amount of forward knee travel. Four, single leg seated knee extension. You can perform one to two exercises for three to four sets of six to 15 repetitions, two to three days per week. I'd recommend picking at least one single leg variation. The speed of each repetition should be slow. For example, if you're performing a squat, descend over the course of three seconds, pause for one second at the bottom, and ascend for three seconds. That's a seven second repetition. If you want to ensure consistency with your tempo, you can download a metronome app on your phone. Remember to manipulate the range of motion, intensity, etc. as needed, and focus on consistency, gradual progressions, and strategies that align with your goals. Stage two, energy storage and release. Along with the isometrics and resistance training, stage two includes jumping, landing, plyometrics, and exercises that prioritize a faster rate of loading. These exercises should be performed two to three times per week with an emphasis on execution. This isn't meant to be cardio. There's an infinite number of possibilities and loading schemes here, so I'm just going to provide two options. You don't have to follow the exact order of either option. One, counter movement jump to a box, counter movement jump, bilateral depth drop, bilateral depth jump, single leg depth drop, and single leg depth jump. Two, forward lunge, forward lunge with step back, step and land, step and land with a step back, and running with a step back. For exercises in this stage, it's important to intentionally load the knee extensor mechanism as much as tolerable because individuals with quadriceps tendinopathy may actually unknowingly offload their affected knee. Stage three, return to sport. There are no distinct exercises that need to be performed in this stage. Instead, this stage is about gradually returning to your preferred sport or activity. For example, if you're a marathon runner, you train for that marathon over the course of several months as you build up your volume. If you're a recreational basketball player, the same thought process applies. You can't expect to jump back into hours of full court games after doing three months of exercises in the gym. You have to build back up to it. Let me help make sense of all of this information by providing you with three tips. One, as I mentioned earlier, these are overlapping stages that should be considered as a continuum as opposed to completely separate categories. You might be doing isometrics five days per week, isometrics and heavy slow resistance three times per week, or a combination of all four stages six days per week. Some of it is trial and error, 
but taking small steps in your progressions will reduce your risk of flare-ups. For example, if you can't perform one repetition of a single leg squat, it doesn't make sense to try a single leg drop landing. Two, not everyone will need to work through all of the stages. If your only goal is to lift weights in the gym, stages two and three might not be applicable to you. Three, you don't have to follow this exact protocol or only perform these specific exercises. I didn't mention the leg press, reverse Nordics, and a host of other exercises including movements that focus on your calves, hamstrings, trunk, etc. Instead, I wanted to create a guideline so you better understand the fundamental components of rehab for quadriceps tendinopathy. If you take anything away from this video, just remember to keep the goal of rehab simple. Gradually improve tolerance and restore function. What about foam rolling, massage, icing, or whatever else you can think of? If it's low cost and low risk, you can pretty much try out anything. However, these things aren't the focus of rehab and shouldn't take away from the goal of progressively improving function. In summary, quadriceps tendinopathy is characterized by localized pain at the superior pole of the patella that has a dose-dependent relationship with the magnitude and rate of loading. It is thought to occur when the intensity, frequency, and volume of quadriceps tendon loading exceeds your capacity to recover and adapt appropriately. Inflammation isn't the primary driver of the condition, so ice and complete rest aren't the cornerstones of rehab. If the onset of symptoms is from doing too much too soon, then your first goal is to find a Goldilocks level of loading that keeps your symptoms tolerable during, immediately after, and the next day following activity. You'll then implement exercises for three or more months to improve your function and tolerance to various activities. You can incorporate adjunct treatments that alleviate pain, but they're not the focus of rehab, especially if they're high cost or high risk. Unfortunately, there is no quick fix. Quadriceps tendinopathy takes time, patience, consistency, and dedication to a structured plan. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, and leave any comments down below. If you are looking for a rehab or performance program or are interested in working with us one-on-one, -on -one, visit our website at e3rehab.com to learn more. Peace.